Welcome to the second episode of the Volant Devlog. Yes, I give a name to the game. It means to fly in Latin. At least that's what Google Translate told me. If you're new here, I strongly recommend you to watch the first episode to better understand the idea here. And also, subscribe to the channel. So, let's go to the video. Last time, I developed a, pl a platform generation system that is quite useful. There's plenty of room for improvement, but this video is not about it. Today, I'll cover how I implemented the level generation system and some basic movements from the main character. I'm pretty sure that this will be very useful for those who are planning to develop procedural content generation on their games. Let's begin drawing three rectangles and writing down some variables. The green rectangle representing the screen, what the player sees, the orange one representing the spawn area for the platforms and the red one representing the destroy area. First, the script spawns a platform in the center, where the player is, and then sets this first platform as the most left, right, up and down platform, once is the only one there is in the scenario. Then it checks if the right corner position is greater than the right edge of the spawn area. If it's not, the script takes the position of the right corner of the platform to use as an edge. Then, spawns platforms, beginning from the bottom edge of the spawn area to the top edge. Each platform randomly apart from the edge using the platform distance minimum and maximum. Now, the platform 4 is the most right platform but its right edge is less than the spawn area right edge. So, the script continues. Now, the platform 6 is the most right platform. Since its right edge is outside the spawn area, the script stops spawning platforms to the right. The same happens to the left side. Spawning platforms on the left if the left edge of the most left platform is inside the spawn area. The logic is the same for the up and down spawning. If the most top platform is below the spawn area edge, the script spawns platforms above it, from the left to the right. If the most down platform is above the spawn area edge, it spawns platform from the left to the right. Now that you understood what I meant, I hope so. Let's see how it looks in the game. On the left, you can see the scene view, and on the right, the game view, what the player sees. As you can see, now we have the white rectangle representing the camera, the yellow one representing the spawn area, and the red one, the destroy area. As the player moves, if the platforms on the edges are inside the spawn area, new ones are spawned, and if the platform leaves the red rectangle, it is destroyed. This is what the player sees. If you have some questions or suggestions about how this method of procedural content generation works, leave a comment below, I'll read them all. And now, let's go to the player movement, at least a basic overview, cause I'll improve this on the next episode. The player can basically run to the left, to the right, jump, and these blue lines are a teleportation skill similar to the Flash on League of Legends. This is how I did it. There are three variables for the horizontal movement besides those in the rigid body component. The movement speed is the top speed that the character can move. The higher this number is, the faster the player moves. The movement uses the rigid body component and adds a force over time. This force is set by the movement acceleration, and if the player is changing directions, the movement change direction acceleration is used instead to prevent the player from sliding. The goal with this set of procedures is to make the movement feel more fluid and natural as possible, while still giving the player quick responses to the commands. 
The jump is pretty simple. It's basically a force that is applied vertically if the player is touching the floor. The player can jump higher if he is still pressing the jump button. For that, a sustained force is added over time until the velocity begins to decay or the jump sustains duration is exceeded. You can see how the velocity accelerates and decelerates here on the inspector. Last but not least, the coyote time. This useful trick of game design is named after the coyote in Roadrunner cartoon, when the coyote always stands still before falling into a horrendous death. This allows the player to still jump after a short time the character leaves the platform, because we all have that friend who blames the controller or the game that he died saying he pressed the button but somehow it didn't work. Implement the coyote time mechanic will prevent this to happen and make your controls feel more responsible. And then I implemented this teleport mechanic, which I'll develop and cover on later videos. But basically, you can teleport to any direction you are facing without facing through walls. The core of this game, besides the adventure and exploration part, is definitely the movement. So I'll test and improve the movement variables and also fix this performance issue with the platforms. But believe me, only move to the scenario is already an enjoyable and fun thing to do. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of the development of this game, as I try to explain some principles that you can use on your games too. Thank you all for the support in the last video, and see you next time. Peace!